Late this week, Congress passed the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security or CARES Act on a roll call vote. Friday, we've been talking about it. That means members did not have to get on planes and go to Washington, D.C. and fill the chambers. And that includes Congressman Ted Deutsch, who has been self-isolating for the last two weeks since his son returned from Spain with what appeared to be symptoms. The congressman, as you see, is connected via Skype. Hello, Congressman. Thanks for being with us. How are you feeling and how is your son? Uh, fortunately, I'm feeling fine and my son's symptoms are uh, just about gone. Uh, we lucked out in this one so far, which is uh, more that can be said, unfortunately, for so many people that we're really worried about right now and that Congress is working so hard to try to help. Are you, were you able to be tested and was he? No, no, there are, as you know, there aren't enough tests in Florida. Uh, we're not testing enough people, so my son came home, had what at the time was not recognized to be a symptom. He lost his taste and smell. It's now been determined that that's clearly a symptom, but because he didn't have a fever, fortunately, he didn't have a fever and, and he didn't have uh, he didn't have the cough, uh, he couldn't get a test. So we self-quarantined, we treated him as if he has it, and fortunately that was the only symptom he had. And uh, we're doing okay as well. That's great news, great news, and we appreciate you are here with us today. I want to talk a little bit about pieces, bits and pieces of the $2 trillion bill. Specifically, there's $175 billion of it destined for states. And in the grand scheme of things, I've heard some criticism that that is just not enough. Uh, what can Florida expect from that? Well, your that criticism may well be right, but I, I think it's important to point out this is the third piece of legislation that Congress has passed. It's, uh, this is an important lifeline that we're trying to send right now to get money out into the communities, out to people who desperately need it, who are being punished for doing what they've been asked to do. People are asked to stay home. They're staying home. This is, um, this is not something they had anything to do with. So we're getting the money out now, but this isn't going to be the last piece. There is a significant amount of money going out to the states to help with uh, the huge shortfalls they're going to see in their budgets, Florida especially. But my, we're already working on the fourth package. Uh, when this one goes forward, the money is going to start to get out there. It's important. Now we have to see where the additional shortfalls are, and we don't know how long this is going to last. Sadly, it, it seems fairly clear that we're really at the early part of this uh, rather than uh, than later on. Yeah, I, I don't know if you were able to hear, we were speaking with uh, Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart just a few minutes ago talking about other parts of the bill. And now you're talking about the, the next one to come down the pike, unprecedented, no past to look back on, no experience to draw from. Are you concerned at this point where all this money is going to come from? Uh, well, sure. I mean, of course, this is two trillion dollars is an enormous amount of money. The decision that we had to make is uh, whether to take dramatic action now to help people and small businesses, companies who are struggling, to make sure that they can get through at this moment, or to uh, refuse to to take bold action and risk a massive depression. So. It's a it's a hard choice, but this is the right thing to do. I actually think there's more that that we could have done here, and more that I hope we'll do in uh, in the next bill. But it it was important to take drastic action because people are suffering. They're suffering physically, and uh, as a result of the virus, uh, the healthcare workers on the front lines are putting themselves at risk. The doctors and nurses and first responders that we we have to do more to to help protect. Uh, and they're suffering economically. And that's what this is about, trying to get people the resources to help them get through this moment. We're going to come out of this. We're going to get through this together, but it's hard and we have to take dramatic action and work together to help ensure that, that we get through this as quickly as we can and without as much pain, averting as much pain as we can. Yeah. Congressman, I wanted to ask you about um, the, the president has been coming up with different bits and pieces of plans, as, as everyone has. Uh, lawmakers are coming up with different plans by the day. And um, one of the things the president had mentioned this weekend is a plan to 
sort of triage the country and so he could recommend that the first few places that might not have as many COVID-19 patients or as much of a critical moment as others start to open up, businesses start to open up. Uh, is, is that something that you would support? Well, I, look, I think it's I think it's right to start to plan for what things are going to look like when we're through this and how we're going to uh, we're going to start up again. Absolutely, we need to be doing that, and and it's important because people need to know that that the confidence exists that we will get through this. But when we plan for it, it's got to be based on uh, it's got to be based on the science, and it's got to be based on on data. And we have to listen to the doctors and the healthcare professionals. So as we make these plans, we can't do it in an arbitrary way. That the idea, the president's idea that randomly we were going to just choose Easter as a date that we're going to reopen the entire economy, um, that's, that's exactly the wrong way to approach this. You can't just pick a date. I love to pick a date. I love that date to be today that we could all get back to normal, but everyone knows that's not the case. So yes, we should be looking at ways that we're going to move forward, but we need to do it thoughtfully and deliberately and based on, on what scientists and healthcare professionals tell us so that we're maximizing uh, the, the protections so that this doesn't spread any more than, than we fear it already will. Thank you so much, Congressman Ted Deutsch. Great to see you and best to you and your son. Good to hear you're feeling okay. Thanks, thanks very much. And uh, thanks for having me. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks. And to all the viewers. Thanks so much.